Hello guys, welcome to another power pack session on the subject of anesthesia. Today we'll be discussing five MCQs of five image based questions in 15 minutes. I am your mentor for anesthesia subject. I am Dr. Hitesh Nathani. Let's begin this subject of anesthesia with five images in 15 minutes. But before we begin, I would like to tell you a few things. You can find me on the Unacademy platform. How you can find me? These are the links. I have been taking right now the FMG batch course, which is Medical Marathon. Medical Marathon of MCQs. This is the marathon that is going for FMG people, right? So you can find me in that batch course that is continuing right now. The other thing you can find me, I have been taking one more course that is an individual course that is going on on the subject of anesthesia. That is a conceptual course in anesthesia, right? This In this course, I am taking the basic concept of anesthesia, which we generally tend to miss. And because of that, we tend to miss the scores as well. Yes. And also, if you want to connect with me, I am available on the Telegram group. Here's the link by the same name, Anesthesia Simplified by Dr. Hitesh. You can connect with me there on the Telegram group. You can message me personally and we can connect it there. I can solve your doubts anytime that you want. Yes. So follow me on the Unacademy Educators platform. Once you download the app, click on the bell icon here and subscribe to our channel. So once you have done that, if you have downloaded the Unacademy app, you should go towards your goal that is for the need PG. Follow this need PG goal, and after that, you can select the free live classes if you want to view any. There are a lot of free classes that are available on our platform. And if you want to subscribe to an academy platform, you can use my code that is Dr. Hitesh to avail a 10% discount on the an academy subscriptions. Yes, to, for the trial, you can go for one month, or there are various subscriptions which are available for three, six, and 12 months, even 20 four month subscription is as well as available so subscribe to an academy channel as well as subscribe to our platform so let us begin our today's session this is an image based questions we will go through it very fast first question on your screen here is right now that is identify the figure which is there on your screen i hope it is visible for you guys now yes identify the instrument which is present here yes what is that option a nasopharyngeal airway Option B, oropharyngeal airway. Option C, endotracheal tube without curve. And option D, is it a tracheostomy tube? I hope it is visible for you guys now. Yes. So what is it? As you can see here in this image, this is a image of oropharyngeal airway, right? Where exactly do we use this oropharyngeal airway? What are the indications and how actually do we use this? How do we recognize that this is an oropharyngeal airway? First, let us look into the parts of the oropharyngeal airway. Yes. The one that you can see here, this is nothing but this is the flange. And from here, this is the airway channel that you can see. It is a hollow channel through which the air passes. And also, this is a channel through which you can do suctioning. This here is a bite block and this completes here is the tip. Right. So this is nothing. This is the part of your oropharyngeal airway. Yes. What are the indications for using the oropharyngeal airway? Yes. Anywhere that you want to secure the airway, be it in emergency conditions or be it for the patient who, who is not maintaining the airway. Yes. So basic simple indication if you want to write it is maintenance of patent airway. Yes. When does a patient or when does a person fails to maintain the airway? Yes. When there is relaxation of the muscles of the jaw. So that what happens? The tongue falls on the posterior aspect. As you can see in this figure here, the tongue falls on the posterior aspect. So what happens? On the posterior pharyngeal wall, the tongue fall. The epiglottis also falls here. So what happens? The airway is obstructed. That means the gaseous exchange does not, does not take place and there is airway compromise. So what will happen? There will be fall of oxygen, which will lead to fall in oxygen saturation of the body, which will further lead to catastrophic complications like cardiac arrest as well. Right. So first and foremost, whenever you see a patient gasping, whenever you see a patient who has collapsed, who is not able to maintain the airway, particularly under anesthesia in pediatric population in the patients who are obese, these patients are very much prone for not maintaining the airway. Right. The patients who are obese, the pediatric population 
in this because of the anatomical changes as well as because of some coenal atresia anatomical changes as you can see changes in anatomy of the upper airway the upper airway obstruction occurs upper airway obstruction occurs so this particular oropharyngeal airway is used to treat this upper airway obstruction right so what are the contraindications for using this airway what can be the contraindication yes people if there is any obstruction or malignancy of the oral cavity okay apart from that i don't think there is any contraindication for that yes there is one once the patient is completely awake once you put this what happens the patient it irritates the posterior pharyngeal wall as you can see here it irritates the posterior pharyngeal wall which will lead to what it will lead to gag reflexes so once the patient is awake so this is very difficult or the patient is lightly sedated it is not that well because the gag reflex will be there and the patient will not be able to tolerate the airway yes as well as there is a tumor or any foreign body foreign body of the upper airway or oral cavity yes once it abuts there it may lead to bleeding or the foreign body may further go inside because of that so how do you measure it what is the size of the airway how do you measure it as you can see here the flange is lying abutting at the lips and the tip should be there at the angle of the mandible so how do you measure the size the tip at the angle of the mandible and flange at the lip so this should be your particular size of the airway it comes in various sizes various different sizes and flange at the level of abutting the lips to the tip lying at the angle of the mandible right angle of the jaw so this is how you measure the appropriate size of the airway from outside which can be inserted to a patient it is used to maintain the patency of the upper airway right guys moving on to the next question which is there on your screen right now identify the cylinder which is there on your screen yes whether this is a cylinder of oxygen whether this is a cylinder of carbon dioxide whether this is a cylinder of air or is this the cylinder of nitrous oxide how do you remember the color coding of the cylinder how do you remember the pin index safety system of the cylinder pisss yes there are various tips various mnemonics various tricks for this to solve once we have seen this in our previous se sections also as well as we have discussed this in a lot of detail in our plus courses as well as you can go through the previous sections of our youtube videos you will find this pin index safety system which we have discussed the tip and trick to solve it there right right now the color coding how do we identify the easiest way to remember the color coding of a cylinder is by visual impression or you can formulate a mnemonic yes how do i remember this it is a blue color cylinder right blue in hindi stands for what do we call it neela right n stands for what nitrous oxide so nitrous oxide n stands for neela in hindi neela is nothing but blue in color so blue colored cylinder that we used in the operation theater is nothing but it is a cylinder of nitrous oxide right oxygen with the help of mnemonic o2 that means two colored cylinder you can remember it like that oxygen black body with white shoulder carbon dioxide you can remember it that it is gray color yes it is black body with white shoulder that is oxygen and carbon dioxide it is gray color cylinder how do you write g first you have to write c and then you just put a mark on that right so gray color before writing g you have to write c in that so the gray color is carbon dioxide right air how do you remember the color of air cylinder this is a homework for you yes go through it i'll discuss the air cylinder in my next session so that you remember all the color coding of the cylinders very clearly moving on to the next question guys this is there on your screen right now following is used in which of the cases case based scenarios right what is the following image that is shown in the figure first you have to identify the image and then you will be able to actually tell which of the following scenarios can this be used yes whether this can be used in cpr that is cardio pulmonary resuscitation whether this can be used in difficult airway scenarios or whether this can be used in cervical fractures or it is option d that is all of the above first let us identify what it is it is nothing but it is an image shown of lma that is laryngeal mask airway 
laryngeal mask airway that is lma the one that is shown on your figure it is nothing but it is a image of classic lma yes there are various types of lma classic lma prosil lma intubating lma lma supreme i gel so on and so forth yes the one that is shown in your figure on your screen right now that you are seeing right now in the image is a image of classic lma that is classic laryngeal mask airway nowadays we divide it or we call them all of them club it into what supraglottic airway devices we call them supraglottic airway devices why because they sit above the level of the glottic opening yes what are the parts of the lma the one that you can see here this brown one it is nothing but these are the cuff of the airway yes the one that you can see inside here it is the aperture of the airway this is the pilot balloon with the inflatable cuff and the tube going through that and here this is there the patency of the tube the airway tube through which the air will pass and this is the connector end which connects towards the circuit end right and this is the patient's end this goes and sits above the level of glottis where exactly do we use it in cases of cpr do we use it yes why do we use it because it is easy to insert easy to insert and why because of its easier to insert you can very easily maintain and ventilate the patient yes maintain the airway maintain airway and ventilate the patient uh, so all these things are used when there is a catastrophic event when you are not able to intubate why more than intubation we can prefer this because intubation laryngoscopy requires a learning curve right this thing can be performed by paramedics as well because you do not require a learning curve for this just open the mouth hold it like a pen and glide it across so that it goes and spits in and you will be able to ventilate the patient so in cases of cpr yes you can use this in cases of difficult airway where you are not able to ventilate and where you are not able to intubate yes in part 2 of the guidelines of the difficult airway guidelines that are there the difficult airway society has come up with a guidelines where you are not able to ventilate or you are not able to intubate in first attempt you can go with supraglottic airway devices so yes it is used in cases of difficult airway scenarios with cervical spine fractures can we use this because we do not want to maneuver the cervical spine but in intubation we have to maneuver the cervical spine right there is an extension at the atlanta occipital joint and flexion at the cervical joint lower cervical joint so this maneuver is less or can be skipped when you are using this laryngeal mask airway so yes cervical spine is a nothing but it is a difficult airway scenario and in difficult airway we either ways use the lma so yes it can be used in cervical spine fractures as well so the correct answer here is all of the above following that is lma can be used in cpr can be used in difficult airway can be used in cervical spine fractures as well yes moving on to the next question guys which is there on your screen right now 53 years old patient is being operated for carcinoma tongue yes under general anesthesia the intra of finding this capnograph reveals yes the intra op finding for this capnograph reveals what is the intra op capnograph findings there is a normal capnograph which is going on and suddenly there is loss of capnographic waveforms so what is the feature what are the exactly diagnosis when you get this loss of capnographic waveform suddenly is it because of bronchial asthma is it because of option b that is endobronchial intubation is it because of spontaneous efforts of the patients have come back or is it because of cardiac arrest yes so flattened out flattened out capnographic waveform what are the causes for that first and foremost you have to check for tube whether tube is there where, where you have fixed it or it has come out so it is accidental extubation it can happen because it is a ca tongue and the surgeon is operating at the same place where you have maintained and where you have in the airway part only the surgeon is operating so whenever he moves the patient space or he is operating at the same time there is accidental extubation tube might come out right so accidental extubation is one of the very prominent cause other cause can be tube kinking or that is complete kinking of the tube or complete tube kinking that means there is no gaseous exchange takes place when do you get get this flattened out capnogram that means there is no carbon dioxide present yes or no etco2 tracing is coming up that means there is no carbon dioxide is being detected 
one is accidental extubation second is tube thinking third can be circuit disconnection and fourth can be yes it is what is it it is a marker a uh, capnography is a marker of ventilation it is a marker of circulation it is a marker of metabolism so you can also get in cases of complete cardiac arrest or asystole cardiac arrest so amongst the following which is there into the option option d that is cardiac arrest is there into the option in bronchial asthma which type of waveform do we get what is it called sharp fin appearance yes we get sharp fin appearance of this yes in endobronchial intubation you might get a little high amount of etco2 because there is no proper gaseous exchange taking place or the airway pressures might be high when it is endobronchial intubation but you will certainly not get a flattened out capnograph in spontaneous effort in between what do we call it we call it curare cleft curare cleft where well, that means where well, the patient's spontaneous efforts are coming out yes we have seen this curare cleft as well when we discussed capnographic waveform so this one flattened out capnograph the correct answer here is option d which is there that is cardiac arrest right moving on to the next question guys the following laryngoscopic blade is used in which is the laryngoscopic blade that is shown here into this figure first you have to identify that is does it is it used in difficult airway scenarios is it used in rapid sequence induction that is rsi is it used in cases of adult for intubation or do we use it in pediatric and infants for intubation purposes yes which is the following laryngoscopic blade it is a straight blade as you can see in this figure and the second one that we have seen the laryngoscopic blade it is curved blade yes so which is the curved blade and which is the straight blade the straight blade as you can see into this figure this is known as miller's laryngoscopic blade yes and curved blade is known as macintosh blade macintosh laryngoscopic blade so where do you use this straight blade miller's laryngoscope it is usually used the tip is usually used to lift the epiglottis right in curved blade what do you do you go towards the you first open the mouth you put in the blade then what happens you move the tongue towards one side and then you go inside towards the base of the tongue and then you lift the epiglottis yes you place your blade at the valvular blade between the epiglottis and the base of the tongue yes you do not lift the epiglottis when you are using the curved blade or macintosh blade but while using straight blade this tip goes beyond the epiglottis and you lift the epiglottis this scenario particularly seen with pediatric intubation why with pediatric intubation because the airway anatomy of the pediatric is different as that of adult anatomy right now what happens with the airway anatomy of the pediatric population the epiglottis is very much floppy one second what happens with the pediatric the airway is anterior and superior so you actually need to lift the epiglottis so that the glottic opening is visible for you to guide the tube therefore this straight blade is preferred in infants in neonates and in pediatric population so correct answer here is option d that is in pediatric intubation straight blade laryngoscope which is shown into this figure is used for adult we use this curved macintosh blade for rapid sequence induction and difficult airway you can use the video laryngoscope for rapid sequence induction it is not necessary that you can use straight blade or for that matter curved blade yes for adult curved blade so in rsi you will use curved blade in pediatric straight blade so you will use straight blade for that yes so best possible answer here is pediatric intubation infants cases neonates we will use this straight blade laryngoscope i hope this small session was very much fruitful for you guys so that more and more you attend this classes the more it becomes fit in your mind and the more images you see the more mcqs you solve the better understanding you will have of this subject and the better your rank will become right so this is me dr hitesh nathani signing off for today i'll see you in my next class bye bye